Hello, this is an impromptu live because I just have gotten a delivery of brushes. Uh, the other box there I won't be opening, I know what it is. Um, I ordered a refill white wash for my Himmy set. Uh, but this one I've already tried to take a label off and unsuccessful. But uh, you can see it's major brushes. And I thought you'd like to know about uh, these brushes and uh, a little brief chat about brushes generally for different types of things. So let's enjoy this moment together because although it's a miserable morning out, um, I was quite jolly when I woke up because I knew that these were due to arrive today. These are a budget range brush and they're sold on uh, main outlets online as um, suitable for acrylic or oil but you know me I work in gouache, oils, acrylics and watercolour sometime. So uh, I have used these brushes before so I know what the quality is like and I have them in my collection already these major brushes that is one that's a different range of theirs for watercolours and I'll be talking about the difference between a watercolour brush, an oil painting brush, and these. But first, um, these are made in the UK, and I was paying in euros. So they cost me about 20 euros. And in this crinkly pack, there are supposed to be 50 brushes, which is, let's face it, pretty incredible for 20 euros. So you think to yourself, oh, they can't be very good quality at all for that money. But these brushes, which are produced in the UK, um, they're produced, they're sold um, a lot to schools. And uh, I came across these uh, brushes first in an art shop that supplies schools regularly. And I didn't expect good quality because the brush, I was buying them separately. Actually, I was buying them in, I think it was like a small pack that had kind of four different brushes in it. And some of them were this white synthetic and other ones were, I'm going to open this. Others were um, that kind of what looks like a sable, but it is, isn't a real sable because their you know, sable is very expensive. Um. So a variety pack was what I bought and I bought it really for one particular brush that I wanted and I was very pleasantly surprised by the quality. Just going to open the corner of this. So I have in this one, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten brushes and they're all the same size. So uh, you've got 10 number four brushes, which is a small brush, and they've got their protective covers on them, which you'll never really need again. I've never thought of a use for those protective covers because if you put them back on, you semi ruin the brush. And, you know, you, to test a brush in a, in a shop, you would just flick it a bit like that because they often have, um, what do you call it? gum arabic on them just to help them keep their shape but if you look at the shape of this hang on i'm gonna lick it so you can see um it makes a nice line doesn't it but uh we'll discuss the quality of those synthetic uh synthetic hairs on them and you know what's good and what's bad in different type of hair and what's good for doing what basically but we'll get one of each brush out first so that was the number four so we want to put away the number four pack where did i put my number four pack and um you might think to yourself well okay i can see why you're buying so many brushes um but that last you years and years you'd be amazed you might get you might get a week or two out of a brush or a month or two depending on how rough you are on brushes and what you're using a particular brush for now look at the point on that how nice is that i'm hoping you could see like to me it looks okay in the 
Hang on, I put my hand out. Sometimes that focuses things better. Um, the point is beautiful on that. And that's a number not. So uh, you need a little fine point. They're all rounds, okay, in this set. Uh, this brand sells different sets. And it sells, put the knots out of the way there, and the fours, if we can find them again. So there's different sets and different um, brushes for different purposes, basically. So let's see what else we have. We'll go a bit bigger. What size is this? This is a number two. Okay, so we have, so far we have a knot, a four, and a two, which should look a bit smaller. Um, So, you know, uh, when you find something that's cheap and cheerful, but something you think is good quality, it's good to tell other people about it. The only thing is that this uh, probably, now that one has a little, and I don't know if you can see it, a little loose hair at the top. And it's not a good idea when you get a brush, if there are loose hairs, to say to yourself, oh, it'll be fine if I just cut the hair off. It doesn't really work like that because you've got a natural end to a hair. So it's not ideal having to cut something because your, you know, hairs are hollow and they just, it'll behave differently. Uh, and part of the thing is they go up to a natural taper because the hair kind of tapers a little bit so that's slightly defective that particular brush but you know uh, still has a point on it and it's still okay that's the first defective one I've found uh, it's still usable and I actually would be able to pull those couple of hairs out that's the better solution now it doesn't want to pull out I actually would have to cut that uh, let's see if the other ones in the if there are any more defectives in the two you see, on, on a dearer brush, right, I'll show you a brush that I paid a lot for. You would be upset with that. Uh, where's the brush that I paid a lot for? I do my hand earlier. Oh, yeah. This is a beautiful brush. This. water It's a watercolour brush, and it's a Windsor & Newton, but I actually use that for oils for fine detail, and it's a beautiful brush. Size 1. Um, that was about a tenner, 10 euros. So I would be upset, obviously, if that uh, had a little hair in it. These ones for 50 brushes for about 20 quid. Not so upset because I'm thinking, OK, probably if there's one or two duds in that size, too, I don't mind too much because they, I might have other ones that are OK. So let's open another two, see if we do better. You know, so 50 brushes for tenner, uh, 50 brushes for 20 versus one brush for tenner, you know. See, that one's, that one's perfect. That size two is perfect, so. So, you know, that one will still get used. So that's the size twos. Uh, yeah, oh, do, I don't know if I finished my thought there. My thought was... Um, these might not be available in the U.S. for U.S. viewers. I don't know. Um, they're made in England, in the U.K., so you're, uh, they're available in, in Europe. I, I would think in various parts of Europe, but I'm entirely sure to be honest with you. And uh, that is a size 6. All rounds, as I said, and, uh, you know, you don't use just rounds in painting. Sure you don't, but that's what they sell in this set, and I do use a lot of rounds. So uh, I want to talk about the uses I'm putting these ones to, and what they're good for and what they're not good for, okay? And differences in brushes. People get very confused about this. Um, and it's very difficult buying brushes online. This is a size... Ten. It's about the biggest I go. And I actually have an old one of these in a size 10, I think. 
So you can see the wear pattern on them. That's a white handled one, but it's the same brush basically. So that, that one is worn down from being used quite a lot and is at the stage where it needs to be replaced because you can see all this has gotten worn out. So I take very good care of my brushes, but they still wear out. That one still has a good point and is still usable, but it's not as nice the slope on the side and it's clearly wearing out. That was used for gouache and I might have used it on acrylics as well, I don't know. But um, these are very good for using any water-based paints, right? Now your watercolour brush traditionally this is from the same company and this is a watercolour brush, a bit quite an old brush now, but uh, this is more suitable for watercolour. It's a fake sable, right? And sable is, a, you know, a floppier, um, it's actually so old, it's stiffened a little bit because there's some paint hiding down here in it. But um, the tip you'll you'll notice if you look at compare brushes in an art shop so you get to know brushes. Um I'm just buying a lot of stuff on online because I can't get a lot of these brushes offline. Uh compare compare the springiness of them on your finger and you will find that a watercolor brush, for example, this sable which you'll recognize, this fake sable which you'll recognize uh by its color, usually, um, will be a little bit floppier than this synthetic, white synthetic one, right? And they sell these white synthetic ones as being suitable for oils as well. Now, I would uh, beg to differ with that slightly because although I would use some of these smaller ones very happily with oils for detail, for very uh, watered down or not watered down, but turpsed down uh, paint that's very fluid. Um, and you've got, you want to do some kind of a little bit of very fluid type drawing in something or get in and just put a little tip of paint in a detail. For example, this new one I'm starting, if I wanted to do the dots on the trees there, very tiny I might get in with that kind of a brush because it gives me the size and control I want um I might use one of those but otherwise the type of brush I would use is a hog fitch okay and this is a hog fitch hair here it looks like goat hair but it's not as soft as goat hair if you look at goat hair because uh, it's handy to compare these hairs and be able to learn to recognize them. Um, that's a little bit softer, you see, and that's often used with watercolor. So the softer brushes get used watercolor a lot. That will leave kind of streaks in watercolor if you try to use it. Um, this kind of brush could get used with watercolor because although it's... Uh, got a bit of spring in it. It's that real soft, very soft hair, which doesn't do that well with oils, you know, just picking up a big lumpy bit of oil paint with those kind of uh, brushes can be a bit difficult because they'll be slipping all over the place and find it hard to carry a lot of paint. Uh, whereas those hogfish ones, uh, if I show you another example, this kind of thing here, which is a filbert shape, which I use quite a lot. That's very sturdy and um, not floppy haired, if you know what I mean. And it'll be, will pick up, you know, very thick, juicy oil paint happily. Okay, so that's kind of the difference between the brushes that I wanted to talk about. Uh, so, there are sizes and uh, then you know so that's that's a nice uh, tip those major brushes i would recommend them having used them before um and i was really pleased to be able to come across them online in set on a big retailer and i presume they're on other big retailers online i don't want to particularly advertise anybody although i am going to kind of advertise somebody in a minute when i'm talking about my oil brushes 
Um, obviously, you can get all kinds of different shapes and everything. And I did notice that in this brand, you can get um, different kinds of packs. Okay, so say you like, and I was thrilled at this, say you like the number six brush particularly, and you use that quite a lot and it becomes a favourite. For me, it would be probably this size naught here um, for my oil painting for the little details. And for bringing that out for uh, watercolour expeditions as well, these are uh, short-handled ones, which are really nice for smaller work. Um. Those, you can order a pack of different sizes. So, you know, you could always have a pack in, I don't know how many in pack, 10 or something like that. So you always have 10 of that in stock. And I can tell you that is, that feels wonderful because there's nothing worse than you're working away on a painting. You're really in the flow and your, your only number not brush is starting to die on you. <laughs> Which can happen very easily if I was using these synthetic brushes with oil paint, they'll die quicker because the oil paint seems to rot them very easily. And the ones that um, I don't know if it's the turps that does it or just how rough you have to be to pick up oil paint. But um, this type of hair is the worst for just it's like it just the uh, turps just eats the hair you know after a week so that would be like half the size and the point gone and everything within a week of use whereas if I was using that brush for watercolor it could last me you know year year and a half before the point starts going these are slightly better I think on oil paints for details uh they're slightly hardier, that white synthetic so every time I see the white synthetic I say to myself okay I know this is probably going to be a little bit um, less floppy than the sable um, or imitation sable ones. I'd never buy, a, a, you know, well, I'd say I'd never buy a real sable royal paint. But of course I did. I bought that Windsor Newton one and used it for oil paint and didn't mind paying a tenner for it because it's so beautiful <laughs> to use. But, um, you know, it don't don't pay a lot for them that often but the cheap ones you you regularly can't get a really nice shape on the cheap ones so those major are really nice to be recommended so to move on for the oil paints i just want to show you before i go um the brand that i have been buying online fairly regularly for a while and i've only just run out of them um starting to run low on them now uh, my oil painting brushes are getting a bit like I'll just show you one show you an example of one that one's not bad I'm still painting with it but uh that that gets worn down you know uh I might get a few months out of a brush with hard usage but you know nothing lasts forever so that's a rosemary and co brush there and I'm going to be ordering brushes from that company. That's it's an English company, but they shop, uh, they ship to Europe and possibly worldwide as well. And I love them because they have a catalog, and in the catalog you can see they sell all kinds of brushes. So that's Rosemary and Co. They're located in England. They're handmade brushes. Um. They are, I find, and this is just my personal opinion, that quality wise, um, where their strengths are, is that they have a huge variety of different shapes and brushes for different purposes. So whether you're painting in acrylics, uh, gouache, oil, watercolour, you will find brushes in that catalogue that you like. They're, you don't have to get the catalogue. You can go onto their website and there's a sort of a PDF version of the catalogue as well. You can order stuff straight from the website. They're very obliging about uh, different ways of ordering as well. You can order postally, which is nice because they recognise that some artists still like working in a very traditional way and aren't necessarily online all the time either. So they're very flexible like that. Uh, the plus um, is that huge variety of brushes. Uh, minuses is that 
say compared to that uh, Windsor Newton brush that I bought for a tenner, um, the rosemary and coal brushes, they tend to be um, a, cheap, a bit cheaper. And the quality, although they're handmade and everything, um, and I've heard other people raving about their qualities, this is just my personal experience, uh, I find that they don't last as long as Windsor and Newton or Dale or Rowney stuff that I've bought regularly before. But I don't mind that because they're cheaper. So um, cheaper and they just they sell brushes you just can't get in other ranges. I love this brush and I've never um, managed to get a brush like that anywhere else. So I'd be putting together an order for those within the next week or so. And when they come in, I'll, I'll show them to you. But I love ordering from them because like you, you can pour over the catalogue and everything and have a good time with that. I like doing things the old fashioned way and having an actual catalogue in my hand. But we'll do an unboxing of that as well. So that will probably be another bonus live stream. So, uh, yeah, all those brushes, I'll probably take out to the... For uh, for this size, I probably take out like two or three of these because I'm going to be working in oil paints today, and um, I'm doing things like those little dots I was showing you on the painting that require uh, that's that's a gouache version, you know, and you could see how that would have been perfect brush for doing this, but I'm doing things that are um, it's not that way off the size dot there that I'm going to need again. So I'm going to need some of those brushes because Hogfitch, although it's lovely to work with, you can't uh, easily get fine detail with it. So that's why uh, artists working in oil oils, they'll sometimes use watercolour uh, brushes or, you know, these synthetics. And I actually prefer synthetics if I can get them to sable because they'll last a bit longer, I find. So that's the brushes discussion. So I would take out, you know, a few of those in a few sizes I'm going to be using. And then the rest will get put away in my little store of materials. And, you know, I'm good for I'm good for those sort of brushes for, you know, a year or so anyway. And then I would buy the odd kind of specialty brush like that kind of thing. Well, that recently I haven't really tried it out yet. But it's a very uh, gouache, watercolory ink sort of a, a thing. And can make nice little foliage and tree marks and things. So um, uh, the other thing I want to discuss before we go is just to tell you about. Uh, yeah, if, and if you have any questions about brushes or anything, if, if I think I can answer it or, you know, ask me by all means. Um. The other thing I want to discuss is water. And I have this upside down because this is a reflection in water. And uh, this is going to be the topic on Friday's live stream. OK, water. We're going to be painting water and I'm going to provide reference material. And the reference is actually going to be related to this place here. Uh, this is, um, I call it my secret lake. It's a lake I discovered a while back and uh, went there on the most beautiful day and uh, shot a whole video there. And I'm going to be um, providing the video as reference for us to paint. But we're going to talk about uh, painting reflective surfaces and how you're using transparent and opaque um, paints to help you get the idea of water. So that's going to be an interesting one to do, I think. So I hope you enjoyed the unboxing and I hope you got some sort of useful information about that. And if you're in Europe, you might uh, say to yourself, yeah, great, major brushes, uh, good tip. Uh, highly recommended, you know. And uh, talk to you soon then. Take care. Bye.